Yeah. Margo, you got a minute? Uh, yeah, come on in. How you doing? I'm good, thanks, and you? Busy, yourself? Uh, busy. You know, consistent with, you know, prior years, mm -hmm. wanted to kind of just talk through your goodwill impairment process. Okay. And the control activities that you have around it, particularly your review and, and the levels of review that happen to reach to the end conclusion, with, mm -hmm. with, which ultimately you guys present to the okay. board. Mr. Smith had indicated that you guys did a step one analysis this year. We didn't have very much headroom this year, okay. so we did the step one quantitative analysis. But we have, a, I think, a real good control review control around that, and it's, um, it's going to be explained in this memo that I'm going to give you. This memo is also going to tell you about the inputs, the revenue projections, the cash flow analysis, the terminal value, those kinds of things. I think everything you need is going to be in here. And, and, and you know, as we've talked in the past, I mean, one of the challenges, and I appreciate the memo, it looks, it looks pretty robust and uh, lengthy. Recognize this is management's conclusion and mm -hmm. support of their conclusion. Right. But, but was also wanted to kind of a little bit in this process understand the rigor and challenge that the review entail. So maybe if you could walk me through those key points mm -hmm. in the memo. Yeah, so first I'll tell you that this memo has been reviewed by the global controller and the chief accounting officer and they've all signed off on it. Okay. We had over the last eight to twelve weeks a series of uh, annual forecasting meetings with our business unit heads. Okay. Um, I sit in those meetings and during those times they talked about what they were expecting for revenue. They're the best ones to do that. T two questions on the revenue projections, if I could. Mm -hmm. Was there a level of threshold that you felt compelled to investigate further or look at growth rates? Or is there something that you used as a bright line or something to evaluate how much further deeper digging and challenge needed to be done in the process of, of those projections? Well, the reason we have the operational heads of the business units in these meetings is they know the business. So there is no threshold. I mean, they know what's happening. So that's, we rely on the, on what the, their, so knowledge, their knowledge, their expertise. And competency yeah. And, okay, yeah. okay. And then as it relates to the revenue projections too, recognizing it happened in a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I know some of those meetings, the majority probably of those meetings have already happened. Is there an opportunity for, for us to participate in those meetings? Um, or did you possibly take minutes from those meetings? What, what we're trying to understand is the questions they asked, the challenges posed, yeah. and how you, you as a company, yourself, dealt with those challenges mm -hmm. or questions. We don't typically have minutes from those meetings, but what I can get you are the uh, calendar invites so you know who is there. And many of those calendar invites will have the agenda embedded in the calendar. What I think I'm going to need to do, just to kind of give you some insight, is I might need to go talk to the various uh, individuals that were in the meeting and try and get them to remember uh, some of the conversations that were held and challenges, yeah. just to corroborate okay. the level of review and vigor that was uh, put, in, put in that meeting process sure. and challenge of the, yep. the projections. Okay. And then in the, in the terminal value, I think that was the other key point, at least in the discount cash flow yeah. that I got to see before coming to the meeting. Just yeah. kind of walk me through how you got comfortable with that mm -hmm. and, and why you feel that the number that, that is in that DCF is the right number. Yeah, we, uh, for the long-term inflation rates, we use a third-party source. Okay. Uh, it seems reasonable and use the same uh, resource last year and you guys were fine with that. One of the things I did want to ask is if the team, yourself or any of your team members, has anyone done a sensitivity analysis to identify what the real true drivers are and how sensitive those um, the the step one is? I mean, we would we do them when it makes sense, right? But uh, you know, we don't just do them out of, as a matter of course. Okay, so and so we're we didn't so really for those do, things no didn't do that for this no, year. No, I don't think so. And then and then finally, what, the last thing that I kind of wanted to talk about was recognizing that there's a lot of information out there and, and you're trying to process all that information to come up with what mm -hmm. you believe the right answer to be. Right. In that memo, is there anything that lays out contrary evidence or things that the team uh, evaluated and I don't want to mm -hmm. say struggled with, but considered and tr how they dealt with that contrary evidence? I don't think we would have put anything like that in here. You know, we were essentially trying to support the conclusions we came up with. Okay, okay. And 
full disclosure, I, I might need to look into that and see if there's anything out mm -hmm. there. We're, we'll do that as part of our audit process sure. and procedure. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Could I, is that my copy? That is your copy. Perfect. And, and then I'm assuming these, these are their sign-offs? That's my sign-off and the uh, global controller. Okay. And, and this says confidential draft. Can I, is this final? I signed off on it. It's final. Okay. Margo, I appreciate your time. Thank thanks. you very much. Yep. Have a good good week. Yeah, thanks and, uh, for coming in. And look forward in. to uh, further conversation. Yeah, check with my admin and she'll schedule for the...